Hey guys, it's me, Lauren Lapkus. On every episode of With Special Guest Lauren Lapkus, my guest is the host and I'm the guest. They plan everything in advance. They don't tell me anything. They tell me what my character is once we start recording. I don't know the topic. I don't know the premise. And I don't know who I'm playing until we go and enjoy the show. Welcome back to Bottom of the Ninth here at Chantix Field. Cumberbatch crawlers down an astonishing 12 runs. It is 12 0 in favor of the St. Cloud Harps. This is Shem Creek. This is my final broadcast. After being in the booth here for the crawlers for almost 70 years, I started when I was just 11 years old. I was at that time the youngest play-by-play announcer in baseball history, and now, of course, I retire as the oldest. I hung on for an extra year to beat Vin Scully, and I'm glad I did, because what a year of baseball it's been here at Chantix Field watching. Watching the crawlers just try, try, try. With me, as always, in the booth, former crawler great, Ty Richardman. So. Okay, so. Uh, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the great players on the field. One second, Ty. Gravoski throws to Melchizedor. Strike one. Okay, so I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the players. And just say... High outside, ball three. Everyone's doing a great job this season. Of course, I um, need to send a special howdy-do to... Strike three. My wife. Now she's the door goes down looking. Betty, I love you more than the sun loves... The moon. You and Betty have been married for quite some time. Yes, we have. It's been, well, you know better than I do at some point, 52 years. That's right. I remember you were somewhat confused about how long you've been married, and I had to remind you that it's been 52 years. I do know better than you do. Well, my first two wives passed. At the same time? Yes. Which, of course, was confusing for the whole town. I remember you revealed to me uh, just this year that you had been married previously. Yes. And I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Twice. But both of my wives were... And her Tony in the battered box. ...hit uh, by the same Mack truck, <laughs> which at the time was new. But several years apart. Yeah. But same day to the date... Same driver. And the same driver. And the same truck. Same person who pushed him. Oh, so (laughs) it was not an accident. It was foul play. I feel I'm old enough now I can admit. There's a statute of limitations on this sort of thing, isn't there? Uh, On murder? I don't think so. Okay, so I'm going to rewind. Okay, Ty. My wives passed of natural causes. Maybe maybe too far the other direction. (laughs) Well, they had caught, uh, they caught, when natural causes, natural reactions to being hit by a truck. Strike three. So your body goes through it. Let me tell you, when you get hit by a truck, your body goes to shock. Um, have you been hit by a truck, Ty? No, I have not. But your body, I watched it happen to two women. Your body goes into shock. You immediately look dead. 
you go to the <laughs> hospital. Your internal organs shut down one by one. Now, go. the looking dead happens right away. Yeah. Your face dead as a door now. Hi, pop fly. And it is easily caught by Richard Mann. Now, I do... Did you ever wish you played the game? You know, Ty, uh, I'm uh, jealous of you uh, because you got to be out on that diamond. And uh, there were many years that I wished that I could be out there with the sun on my face and uh, just my mouth just crammed full of garbage that I'm chewing on and spitting out. And uh, just want to catch that ball, throw it, and... uh, Revel in a job well done. Now, I don't know if your listeners know this, but you've been wearing the same blazer since the first game. Now, it doesn't quite fit right, and it's been ripped down the back and added patches. That's right. This is my blazer from when I was 11 years old, just starting out. Oh, it seems to be a torrential downpour is happening, and we are now in... Rain delay. That's what happens down here in uh, in Cumberbatch. It comes out uh, fast and it comes out strong. Well, now is the time that we feel the time. Now we feel the time, yeah. So, Ty, baseball, it's been your life. Love the ball round, White. Did I ever tell you I did a poem about it? No, I'd love to hear your poem. I launched into it. I'll rewind a bit again. Love the ball, round, white, red stitches. Bitches get snitches if they go to the pitches. Can't believe I met a lady who did not know I was witchcraft in up in this business. I will not have sexual relations with that woman. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Crack of the bat. And I'm out. Is that the end of the poem? Yes. Ty, that's fantastic. You know what? I, I, oh, sure. Absolutely. I'll give you snaps for that. You know, uh, following your career for many years, you know, from here in the booth and now, uh, how wonderful it is to have you by my side for so many games. Um, how old am I? <sighs> You you don't know? See, you know all the facts and the stats. That's right. And I can't keep track of all that in my life. I'm just a man living each day. You were the first, of course, you, you were a groundbreaking player for the Crawlers. You were the first person back in 1971 to be, you were the first player that had... Ooh, I can smell that sepia tone. <laughs> On all my photographs. That might be your cataracts. <laughs> but you were the first player to have legs of equal length. Yes, and I'm very proud of that. Now, of course, they didn't stay equal. No, but for, for a few good seasons there, it was a real boon to the team, and we almost won a game. Well, because I, I got a little cocky, and I wanted my legs to both be longer. So That's I right. added in and added a wood level between pelvis and thigh. Mm. Uh, about a, what do you call it, five and a half inches of wood. That's right. Tried to be a little taller. Now, of course, now the man who measured the wood made a mistake. And one of my sides was quite smaller than the other. It was as if I was on two different stilts. Which, of course, as everyone knows, is uh, death in the stilt game. You want those stilts to be of equal size. It's actually an imperative. When baseball changed and it became filled with drugs for a, for a guy like you a player of the old school did you did you did you get jealous i got jealous and i got yeah please talk about this revenge well i finally evened out my legs by removing the wood now that alone got me back to where I was playing before. I misunderstood what you said, I think. 
Well, I said I got even. Yes. And, and I, I did. I think I, I was leaning on the other interpretation of that, and I shouldn't have, and that's, that's my mistake. Well, time. another thing I did, though, to actually play a little bit of a prank on these old guys who were suddenly coming in with the drugs and the drugs, I guess you'd yeah, say. Yeah, the old guys coming in with the drugs. I told them we we're going to have a party. And I said, no, I need everybody to show up at this time. Let's just say it was six. I don't remember what time it was, and I don't know if you're a detective or if the details matter that much. No, it's still me. It's still Sham. I'm just the announcer. Okay, because if you were a detective, I'd say not guilty. Right. Now, I found a piñata. Uh, I had wandered past a birthday party of some young children, and I stole the piñata they were going to use. Ty, what made you do that? This plan that I had in mind, and I knew I had to get a piñata, but I wasn't sure where to find it. So you just started wandering around, hoping you would stumble across a child's birthday party. Let me tell you, it was a Saturday, and I did it really fast. Got it. Step one, complete. Now what I had to do next is going to be a little bit darker. I went stride into the locker room. Stride in. You went stride in. Opened every locker, stole all the drugs, put them in the piñata. Hmm. Now, of course, I had dumped out the candy that was in there already. Of course, to make room for the drugs. Absolutely. So now there's all these little baggies of cocaine and steroids and pills and all sorts of little, little, just whey protein, all kinds of things you're not allowed to be using. So I set up the string. You did what now? I set up the string. Set up the string. To hold up the piñata. Right. You're miming for the for the home listener, because they are listening to this on the radio, just so they know. You were miming, uh, pulling the string. Now, you threw the... Did you throw the string over a rafter? Yes. So what I did was... Well, it was a little tricky. So I went out to the field, and I threw it over the uh, side of the audience, where the fans like to be. That's right. But then it kind of was just hitting against the wall there because I couldn't get any leverage. That was fine for my purposes of my prank. Now, this is back before it was called Chantix Field. It was known as Caper Stadium. Exactly. And I had the guys come over and beat it with bats, one by one, blindfolded. And whoever got whatever drugs they wanted, they got them. And now here's where the plan backfired. Now, of course, what I wanted to happen was that they wouldn't have the drugs. What, I'm, what mistake I made was kind of setting up a plan that involved giving them the drugs and maybe even trading hands and giving people things they didn't even have access to before. So I made the drug problem worse in our community, and suddenly everyone was jacked up like Popeye, and I couldn't keep up. Now, do I do drugs? Did I have to at the time? Yeah. Everyone was doing it. So you, every, so you did do drugs. Yeah. You were... A little bit ahead of the curve on that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you enjoyed it? Yeah. And you're not sorry? No. You know, uh, something I've been meaning to ask you. What? If you could put together a dream team, who would that be? And I'm talking, you have access to people from all of history. Okay. Michael Jordan. William Shakespeare. Attila the Hun. I don't know if I should have specified a baseball, a baseball team. the cat. Okay, he's not real. And John, his owner. Because everyone leaves him out. How many years on a team? I think I have more. It's still, let's say there's nine. So I'm at five. I'm, I'm going I'm to just be the coach. So I'm not on it. Right. That's very generous. Huh? Okay, so I got four more slots. Tom Hanks. Is good. Two inches of water filling up here. As Forrest Gump. Tom Hanks specifically as Forrest Gump. And Richard what- Nixon. And I'm going to add two women because I want it to be a little balanced. <laughs> That lady who looks like Barbie from all the plastic surgeries. And Carrie Ann Inaba from Dancing with the Stars. Is she one of the dancers or is she one of the stars? Well, in this purpose, she's the pitcher. 
Okay, what are the positions of the other people? Dancer, star. No, hold on a second. <laughs> Richard Nixon, where do you see him? Okay, so he's got to be the catcher. All right. So we got Carrie Ann Anuba? Inaba. Inaba. She's a pitcher. She's throwing a Richard Nixon, mm-hmm. former president, disgraced in the Watergate scandal. Then we have uh, John Garfield's owner. Where do you see him? Outfield. Outfield. All right. Which position in the outfield? Right, left, left. center, left, left field. All right. Then we have William Shakespeare, the, the immortal bard. He he wants to be the scorekeeper because he likes to have the pen and paper. But I'm going to put him on right outfield. Okay, so he's in right field. The lady who looks like Barbie is yeah. uh, the runner. Designated runner? Is she just is that, a pinch runner? or that pinch? <laughs> you know, Ty, sometimes I worry uh, your advanced years. You're, you're maybe losing a step here or there. Disagree. Uh, <laughs> that's your prerogative. Garfield... He's good at, well, he's good at eating. You can't do that on the field. You shouldn't. Where do you put him? I'd probably put Garfield. First base. Mm, I don't know if I'd trust Garfield at first base. That's a, I mean, that's a. Third base. Second base. Honestly, honestly, I think I'd, I'd probably put Garfield in, uh, in right. Well, then where's Shakespeare going to go? I'd, I'd put Shakespeare. Uh, at short. All right. Who's left? John Garfield, by me. John Carrie Garfield, Ann. Mark, Carrie Ann. Richard Nixon, Shakespeare. Richard Nixon. Oh, Attila the Hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, first base. Yeah, absolutely. And then I have two more. Hmm. I have no idea what I said. Well, we still got to fill. Uh, still got to fill second base. We got to fill left field, center field. No, we did left field. John's out there. Oh uh, no! I think we. Is he? I, like I thought he was right field. That was Shakespeare. But you moved Shakespeare. That's to short. true. I'm missing two. Tom Hanks is Forrest Gump. Tom Hanks is well. He's as a runner. Gump. He's okay. So pitch runner. Pitch runner. <laughs> And then one more. <laughs> you, I'm sure the listeners are screaming the name into their computer. Second base. Who's that going to be? I can't remember who it was. I'll make a new person. Carol Channing. Sounds good. She's still alive. She is? Yes, she is. Hmm. Well, I like that. Now, if you could... Oh, Michael Jordan! <laughs> Get rid of Carol. Now Michael well, Michael Jordan that second the only one with any baseball. demonstrable baseball experience. Now everyone was mad when he did baseball. Although Tom Hanks, it's funny, you know, he was in a baseball movie where he played a former baseball pitcher. As far as Gump, not as far as Gump though. I don't, I don't recall Forrest Gump if he played baseball. But he in ran the film. so hard his braces fell off. He did run so hard his braces fell off, and of course he ran across the United States, and uh, and he also played ping pong. So oh, he yeah, does he have ran some athletic. The United States, that's important. He played table tennis. He had some uh, yeah, some athletic experience. Some bats. Now, everyone was mad at Michael Jordan, but let me tell you one thing about that. If you were a good player at a sport and you were so good you could do another sport at a professional level, what on earth would stop you? Well, that's, uh, I'm on the record as saying this. I thought Michael Jordan had every right to become a baseball player. I, if he'd stuck with it, I think he could have been uh, quite a powerful uh, hitter. I forget that I'm talking to you because you are the one who released that CD of all of your thoughts on Michael Jordan being the baseball player. That's right. Still copies available. Really? Yes. There's so you didn't <laughs> sell all of them? I didn't sell all of them. I, I sold uh, not as many as uh, I'd hoped, but more than I'd expected. Now, I have a question for you. I saw you pull up here in, in what can only be described as... A wheelbarrow. Yeah, well, I don't want to say it. <laughs> I put a motor on a wheelbarrow. And you zoomed right up. And I zoomed right up. Now, how good is that for your body? Because you're a perfectly shaped C. Thank you. It's it's terrible for my body, Ty. And it's something that we did as a promotional uh, promotional stunt here many years ago. And it became such a hit with the fans 
uh, that uh, I was forced to do it for every game. I had to arrive at a motorized wheelbarrow. I miss that. At Ontantic's field is, has filled up with five inches of rain. Yes, and oh, look who's coming out. It's the Nightcrawler himself, the mascot of the crawlers, and he is jumping all around. It's sad to see his his costume is very sodden. Now, he it's, likes water play. Do you know that about him? Well, he plays, I mean, the, the character, of course, is a, is a, a water creature. Yes. Uh, but he is not, uh, he's not built for this weather. No, he's a soggy mess. Now but I, you're saying the guy who plays him is into water play? Well, yes, and I do mean that sexually. Now, he's somebody who... That's is, how I took it. He, started a company in town. Now, this is all legal. He started a company. That he takes a wrestling ring mm. and puts a plastic shield around it, fills it with a little bit of water. And then he gets a couple of women and a couple of men, and they all have to wrestle. And people pay upwards of $15 to see this. Is it more than 15 Upwards means more than. Right, so... After 15, is it negotiable? Well, so... Okay, so they'll pay anywhere up to 15. And, so 15 is the cap. And then if you want to pay more, that's a donation. So at that point, you're kind of a tax write-off. A lot of people like that. Well, who doesn't? Your teeth are falling out. Now if I you want to pop it. them back in... Yeah. There you go. Are yours all natural? <laughs> I am proud to say that I've kept 31 of my 32 teeth. I have one false tooth in my head. And if you can guess it, Ty, can you guess? Now, we've known each other for years, sat by, side by side here in this booth. Now, we don't often face each other. We're usually both facing the field. But... I will give you a hint that the false tooth is on your side of the booth. Is it the front one? Yes. Now, see, I knew it because when it... Now, there was one day where you had all the teeth, mm -hmm. and then the next day you came in with the front tooth bonded to the other front tooth. And That's it right. just looked a little strange. Yeah, it was a little too close. It was a little too close. It was like when, before Tom Cruise got those braces, and it looked like he had one big tooth in the yes. middle. Yes. That's exactly what it was like. And I'm so glad he got braces, and I'm so glad they were regular ones where you could see him. Yeah. I'm glad he waited as long as he did. I'm glad he was extremely successful, very well-known, handsome man. And then then a couple decades later, he said, I'm going to get braces. And they're not going to be not obvious. Well, you know, Scientology, uh, he's a Scientologist, and they feel yes. that uh, dentistry is an industry of death. Is that so? Yes, they're against dentistry. So this was, he had to get a special dispensation from David Miscavige. This is all uh, what I read. This is wild, because I started a religion recently. And I was Ty. excited to tell you about. Now, Ty, you've been hinting at this for quite some time. Yes. Now, I told you, You yes. finally did it. Because what I was doing, and you knew this, I was collecting old religious texts. Yes. And I kept the pages, but I just kind of erased very hard until the writing was gone. <laughs> That's right. And then Sometimes would, it would just tear the page. Yeah. Well, especially if a race so low that it's just that metal part of the pencil, but you still want to use it. That's right. Because it's your favorite pencil. Well, I love it. I only have one. And uh, I re rewrote in my religious ideals and ideas. So I got a couple if you want to hear. I do want to hear. What are the what would you say are the founding tenets of your religion type? Ask not what your country could do for you. Well, that's a good one. Ask what you could do for your country. Are those two separate ones? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ask your country how it's feeling. Oh, well, that's nice. Tell your country how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And above all, wave the flag as high and loud and proud as you fantastically can. <laughs> So I need everyone to shove their flag as high up on the pole as it'll go. Just shove it up there. As tight as it'll stay. And then and fantastically and then fly fantastically it. fly it with the wind in its hair, I guess. Now, that's that's a, uh, an idea that I think, and I, don't, I hope this won't be a controversial statement, but I think no matter what religion, uh, what, what your faith is, whatever uh, creed you are, 
you can agree with that ideal. And it's much like Scientology allows you to be whatever religion you want. That's why I like it. I think patriotism is the sexiest and best thing a person can withhold inside their heart. <laughs> and... Things are taking a turn for the worse, unfortunately. The rain just will not let up, and they have evacuated the lower seats the of team, the field. The team still wants to play. The team, Both teams still want to play. You, you would think that the crawlers would just forfeit. They have never won a game against the Harps or any other team. And you would think the Harps would be happy to just take their win and leave. But no. But no. Both teams adamant that the game continues. So we are waiting out the rain here in the booth. And uh, Ty Richardman. Uh, oh, Sam, I just I wanted to just draw a little bit of attention to the fact that the Nightcrawler himself tried to sweep the water off the field. Yes, a Pyrrhic victory. <laughs> he had a small broom. He had a very a comically small broom, one might say. It was uh, it almost was like for a fireplace. Yes, it did look like one of those fireplace brooms. And he was just pushing the water to no avail. You know, it put me in mind when I saw that little fireplace broom. It put me in mind of uh, the staircase murder. Yes. Yes, because of course I thought of other fireplace implements, notably the blow poke. Well, I would implore you to not talk about that film. Solely because of how both of my wives previously died. True. Now, at one point, you said an owl had pushed well, them owl, in front of the truck. I, I'm not, I can't prove it, but I can't prove it at all. But after they were hit by the truck, they had a lot of blood on them. Right. And one feather. And one feather. And if you have a theory as to where that came from, and don't say the street, and don't say it was just laying there from some other bird. It was quite clearly placed in their skin. And now I'm not, who am I to say? But I do think there are owls out there who are killing wives. Just <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they've heard of the husband wanting that to happen. But they, maybe they are good at hearing things on the phone. They come in and either to a home or to a busy street and they push them. Ty, why would you say we don't hear about more owl murders of men? Well, or I, husbands, if you will. How many women do you know actually want to kill their husband? Me personally? Mm -hmm. Under 10. How many men do you know want to kill their wife? Upwards of 15. There we go. So simply numbers. It's what? Simply numbers. Simply numbers. <laughs> no, Shem. Yeah, Ty. Are you still doing your job as, as a bingo caller? I still do, and I still do call bingo. And if anyone wants to join us, it's every Sunday night at midnight. We do midnight pajama bingo, and we've been doing that at the Cumberbatch Rec Center for I want to say it'll be our golden anniversary. But you're 81 years old. Yes, I. When am. are you gonna just put it to rest? Well, you know, I. Because I'm I, younger than you. I have uh, you. <laughs> you are 52. Are fifty two? Are wait, are you? No, not? I was married for fifty two years. You're married for fifty. That's what I'm thinking. But of. I was playing baseball in 1971. That's right. So I had to be about twenty at that point, at least. Sure. So I'm say I'm twenty. Well, I don't know when I got married. I don't either. When would you say if you had to if you had to pin it down? When would you say you got married? Fifty two years ago. <laughs> And I think I was, so let's see. Maybe I'm older than you, because I had you two might wives be. before that. You, you I got might him, be. I got them in That's there. right, that's so right. So I think about 103. Okay. So you are definitely older than me. I'm very old. But you were very quick with the math on how old I am, and I appreciate that. That's, 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 a, that's a hopeful sign. Well, you know, I think it's easier to keep track of somebody else than to keep track of yourself. I've always said that. It's very true now. The Nightcrawler just swimming around, doing the backstroke. 
<laughs> He's funny. I love him. It looks like three feet of water down there. Have now. you seen him do the stand up material that he does? I have done. What's uh, remarkable about the Nightcrawler is that he will do uh, a full 15 minute set of stand up. And of course, he can't speak. So it's uh, it's entirely uh, mimed conversation. And he's, he's not, I want to stress this, he's not a mime. He's not no. doing mime work. He's not pretending to be trapped in a box or walking against the wind. He is miming doing stand up. And this is a this is a tribute to how good a performer he is. You feel as if you've heard him tell jokes, but and of you, course he hasn't said a word. You get he gets laughs. He gets laughs, and everyone laughs at the same time. It's like they've heard the same. It's joke. like they've heard the same joke. Now, Shem, I've uh, had a qu- I feel that I'm near my end of my life. I think you are. Okay, just being, <laughs> just guessing. What is your name short for? Is it short for Shemrock? It is short for Shemrock. I was named after the popular seasonal shake. Shemrock shake? Yes. But it was a, it was a misprint on the birth certificate. So it just, that's much like Oprah. So my full name is Shemrock Shake Creek. You know, Oprah's birth certificate said Orpa. Is that true? Mm-hmm. So why do we not call her Orpa? Because she was never called Orpa. Mm. She was called Oprah. It was a mistake. I'm not sure which her name actually is. Which her name is? Well, yeah, which her name is? Or Oprah. Her name is Oprah. We called, we knew now, her as Oprah. We knew, well, her hold mom. on. What is her name supposed to be, I guess Oprah. is my question. Her name is supposed to be Oprah, and it is. And they spelled it Orpah. But on the birth certificate, now this is legally binding. Yep. So her name is Orpah. By all of God is purposes. What's that? For all impends and purposes. Now, if you're just uh, coming down to Chantix Field for the next game, if there is a next game, we have to see if uh, this rain will continue and fill up the entire stadium. But if you are going to come down, be sure to take advantage of the concessions that we have here. Of course, Cumberbatch County is famous for its sautéed peanuts. I would like to point out that the, there are now full-on fish swimming in the field. <laughs> they seem to be having a great time, too. From. I don't know where they came they're from. Flipping, they're flipping, they're doing tricks. flipping, flopping, doing everything a fish can do. It's exciting to see. Now, now the nightcrawler's got a couple biting on his sleeves. Oh, do you think they might be piranhas? <laughs> they might be. Chomp, chomp. <laughs> Something's going wrong out there. Ty, in all your years of playing baseball, you traveled around the country mm-hmm. and uh, you've played in various cities. What was your uh, what was your favorite st- city to play in? Okay, well, it's not a city anymore. Uh, it was a city I loved dearly back, back way back when, and it was called Tehranman, mm-hmm. and it was right by the border of Canada and New York, and it was called Tehranman because it was wanting to be Toronto, right? But it was American. Mm-hmm. And so they called it. What was the second? Where did the second part come from? So, Tehran Man. And the M is. M A N. The the M is the only part we don't understand. Those T O R O N M A N? Tehran Man? There's a T, but it's silent, just like when you say Toronto. Right. Gotcha. T O O R O N T. And they had a commercial. M A N. Oh. T O R O N T M A N. It's an American city that is a Canadian name and we'll always love it just the same. And now the city <laughs> shut down because they had a lot of bad people living there. But it was my favorite city to play in because they were great fans. So great fans, but terrible citizens. They're good at cheering. They're really into it, getting fist fights with each other. Even though you would have been the opposing team. But they were good at cheering their own team. They love the game. What was, forgive me, what was the name of the team in Toronto? It was called the Men of Tenement Square. And it was kind of a, they just pulled, you know, Toronto Man sounds like Tenement. It's a bit of a clunky name. Now, here, if, if, uh, if the crawlers were ever down, um, which they frequently uh, always are, uh, the crowd will chant, let's go crawlers. What was mm-hmm. so for the the men of Tiananmen Square? Tiananmen Square. How, how would the the fans cheer on that team? They'd say, "Now this is a specific cheer they would do." For I them. bet it is. 
T. T. You got your T. You got your she. O. O. You got your O. You got your O. R. R. You got your R. You got your R. O. N. T. O. M. A. Are you just speeding through it, or is this exactly how they would do it? No, no, I was speeding up. Okay. So they would do that all for Tron men, and then they'd say, Our team. Our team. The men of Tiananmen Square. Your teeth are slipping a little bit again. Let me start over. T, T, you got your T, you got your T. O, O, you got your O, you got your O. R, R, you got your R, you got your R, O, N, T. Just speak through and But they would do the whole thing. The man of Tiananmen Square. <laughs> Gonna break it down for y'all. And watch him play. Watch him play. We want to watch. We'll watch you play. Your teeth. And what was their mascot? It, no, you're not going to understand it, but it was a horse, but the back end of the horse was pig legs. So it's very <laughs> uneven and very fun to watch. So they'd hire a child to be in the back, and so he'd be managing the little pig hooves, and it would be just fitting his legs just so. And then the front is a man. Right. Now, what did that have to do with the men of Tiananmen Square? Well... So what you need to understand is they love meat in this town. Yes. So much so they can't decide what's their favorite horse or pig. <laughs> so they love. So, so these these people of Toronto, one of the things that they did that was so terrible is they ate horses. Well, terrible to you. Have you ever eaten one? I, not that I know of. Because the meat tastes real supple. It's very slippery meat. It's really good. It's very, very, very dark. It's almost uh, pitch gray. So uh, horse meat is it's uh, slippery and dark, and uh, got like a very dark gray. Very dark gray. Uh, it's you can just <laughs> your mouth is watering. Slurp just. it. Well, it can't get it now. IKEA was sounding the meatballs, but of course I would eat there very regularly just to get my just to get my taste buds a little bit wet. That's right. And then now so, can't get it anywhere. I had to go to Sweden. <laughs> Not going to do that. Have you ever eaten puffin? Well, no. Have you? I, I have. I tried what it. Is it color first of all? It's uh, it, it's a uh, pink. It's a dark pink. Now, see, everyone thinks all meat's going to look like that. Horse? Mm. No, 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 no. <laughs> what was your have least? You ever, wait. Hmm? Have you ever eaten squirrel? Albino squirrel. Uh, growing up, I did eat a fair bit of squirrel, but never an albino squirrel. No. So what you want to know about albino squirrels is that their meat's fully red, just like their eyes. Mm. You slape that skin off. You do what? Slape it off. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a gentle slice. And it'll be pure red. And it does not taste good. It's not good meat. It's a little gamey. Tastes like... Have you ever bitten into a rotten clementine? Many times. Just like that. Same toughness of the skin, too. When you were a little boy uh, growing up here in uh, in Cumberbatch, did you, and you dreamed of playing professional baseball? Yep. Did Is there you, another dream a little boy could have? Uh, not not to my knowledge. It's always been a, a dream of mine to be just associated with baseball in any way. And, you did And it. I'm proud to say that I've, uh, for decades now, I've been... Uh, my living my dream of watching baseball as a job. I hope I don't outlive you. I think you might. I mean, at this point, you're you're on track to uh, to outlive me. You shouldn't be alive. I don't want to be. If I'm being completely sincere, sometimes you know that that's the thing about aging is that uh, it's unpleasant. And uh, many times I've wished to uh, to just go to sleep and never wake up, but uh, but I continue for another day. And, and and look, I have very few complaints. I'm in pretty good health, all things considered. But um, a lot of times, I, I I close my eyes at night and I think, please let this be it. See, what I do is I crawl onto my bed, which is on the floor, and I because I can't get up onto a bigger bed. I have to go low. Speaking of crawling, the night crawler appears to be being torn to pieces by these fish. So we're going to take a quick pause Uh and figure out what is going on. We'll have more, hopefully, Crawler's Baseball for you when we return. 
Lapkins with special guest. Hello, Lapkins. Welcome back. Shem Creek here with Ty Richardman. My name is Ty Richard. Ty Richardman, we're here at Chantix Field waiting for this rain delay to end. And Ty and I are going to take a break from talking to each other and trying to fill time. We're going to bring a special guest into the booth, this young lady. Um, she entered a contest to be here, to join us in a broadcast booth. And uh, I thought she was just going to sit here and watch, but she had some conditions. So uh, one of the conditions is that she answer some questions from the social media platform Twitter. And her name is Tracy Reardon. Tracy, hey, hello. What's crackling, Shem, Quick, and Ty Richardman? Um, well, excited to be here. I've never been in a baseball diamond before, um, but it's very cool. And I have a bunch of questions from my Twitter followers about baseball, playing on a team, just the game, being a recording artist like yourself who answers baseball trivia as Absolutely. you're playing. And you call this segment Help Me Rhonda, is yes, that correct? Yes, this is the name of it. But your name is not Rhonda. No, but we need her help more than anybody. More than ever. So Rhonda is a specific person? Rhonda is, a, is a, within yourself, and you understand if you have a question, you're asking her, and that's who actually is answering. I think I got it. No, I was just going to ask a question myself, because now, Shem, do you know this little punk here? This young lady? Yeah. Uh, we've never met before today, no. Okay, well, I dislike her entire look and uh, her, but uh, but I'm a little confused because her attitude doesn't match it. Well, now, Tracy, you'll have to forgive uh, Mr. Richardman here. He's a gentleman of the old school, and uh, yeah, he your looks appearance like he's on is death's door. He well, you'd think that, but uh, <laughs> I think he might even outlive you. Oh uh, well, good luck. I don't age. <laughs> um, this question comes from Zach Cuomo at Play on Weirds. Why are all metaphors for life performance taken from baseball, e.g., step up to the plate, knock it out of the park, spit tobacco juice at my manager? Well, this is an excellent question, and for me, it's simple to answer because baseball is life. I think that uh, the game of baseball is a beautiful ballet that uh, has so many analogies to just how we live our lives. Well, for example, why don't you tell why don't you tell this young lady? Let's think about something that happened in our life All right. and make it into a baseball metaphor. Okay. Now, so for you, um, how about, well, okay, how about the situation where your entire family moved away and didn't bring you? That's right. When I was 11 years old and I had expressed a desire to, uh, to be a broadcast announcer, uh, the next day I found a note on the fridge. Uh, it was a crude note. It was short and to the point. It said, good luck, asshole. And I, I hope we're on enough of a delay that that can be bleeped out. But uh, mm -hmm. I will not uh, clean it up because those were the hurtful words that my family used. Got to be honest. So what did you, how did you make this? And I'm one of five children. So this was... This was not just my parents. This was my siblings as well, my brothers it's and sisters. It's a lot of effort to move on. a lot of effort, yes. Costly. Very expensive. <laughs> Logistically, it's They had to get difficult. a new job. And this was, I often wondered, is this something that they had been planning for quite some time? Because it was so fast on the heels of my expressing this desire to have this job. Um, I, I'll never know for sure. Now, so just to be clear, you lived in the house alone for a little bit, right? Yes, I did. And then a new family moved in. Yes, unbeknownst to me. It was, again, I woke up one day, and there was a note on the fridge saying, don't touch our stuff. So, like, okay, I don't know what to know about baseball, but I do know about angels in the outfield. And it sounds like a fine baseball you had some angels in your outfield who helped save you. Well, certainly my tale of, uh, of woe, I think, uh, was instrumental in me getting the job at 11 years old. I think that the, uh, the Crawlers organization took pity on me and said, yes, let's make this young boy our, uh, our announcer. Now, this is where the phrase comes from, stay in the dugout even if the team goes home. Exactly. Of course. Now, uh, thinking about my tragic existence, I was one time stuck on a roller coaster upside down mm -hmm. for upwards of 15 hours. <laughs> Now, 
Well, we, the best, best baseball metaphor I can think of is if you're going down, give it a pop, it a pop, pop fly. fly. That's right. If you're going down, give it a pop fly. Now, when you were stuck on that uh, roller coaster, that's how you met your wife. And, uh, God bless him. That's how it worked out. We talked about everything in those 15 hours. Uh, the blood rushing to our head, how we wished we could get out. Why is this happening? We learned so much. What would you, when the blood was rushing to your head, because that is quite a long time, what would you do? Would you try to sort of lean forward, like, you know, hunch yeah, over? Yeah, we try to pull ourselves up uh, as much as we could into a sort of butterfly on a chrysalis kind of position. Wouldn't have been a problem for me because of that wheelbarrow. A perfect C-shape. That's right. Okay, I think it's safe to move on. So the next question we have is from Nolan Jones at boss underscore gobbler underscore. His picture is a guy holding a little kid, and they, he looks happy. The kid, you can't see the face. What was the other guy's picture? That's a good question. Hold on. Uh, it was a little body puppet, little naked body puppet. Oh, sounds racy. Okay, I want to be an announcer, but I don't have a classic announcer name. What would be a good name to adopt for my career? Oh, well, what's his so, current name? His name is Nolan Jones. Ooh, that's not a bad name. Yeah, but not, it doesn't compare to Shem Creek. Well, that's flattering. Shemrock Shake Creek. Well, let's give this kid a new name. <laughs> Nolan's a good start because it's a good baseball name, obviously, the great Nolan Ryan. Um, let's say uh, if we make, n- let's make Nolan his last name. Okay. And that's for his first name, a good baseball uh, name. I think it should be an adjective. Like gr- green. Green Nolan. It's a little too short. Tasty Nolan. Tasty, tasty Nolan. Tasty Nolan it is. Okay. I'm Tasty Nolan here in the booth. Signing off, this is Tasty Nolan. Here's a question for all the ladies out there. <laughs> And also gay men. Diana sends in at Indie Bell. Her picture is uh, actually a baseball uh, uh, picture. It looks like it's a baseball field. It does look like a baseball field. So she's really... Oh, and her, her profile says, I watch baseball, and that's pretty much it. Well, this is... I can't wait to hear this question. How do I get men to stop saying, you're just watching for the butts, even if it's partly true? <laughs> Now, see, I thought it was going to be a real question because she loves baseball so much. It's true. I I, I would say first of oh, your teeth. There One we piece go. of gum. Ty, can you chew gum with your uh, with your dental work? Well, I, no, but I could stick it up in between. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> I would say first of all, uh, it's uh, it's wonderful that. Uh, uh, that you like baseball, you don't have to be a man to like baseball. Uh, baseball is for everybody, and and uh, I'd love to see at some point uh, um, some uh, some women in the game. I hope I live long enough to see that, but uh, I, I probably won't. Um, no, you probably won't. But There's I would not much time left on your end. I would say, in terms of uh, looking at uh, men's rear ends, uh, football is your sport. So. I don't know what these men are thinking that are telling her this. Uh, I mean, certainly there's a lot of shapely derrieres in the game of baseball, but really mm. football for, for an ass watcher, that's your game. Yeah, but why is the number one emoji used at baseball games the peach? Because of the butts. You're saying the number one em- emoji, emoji is a little cartoon on the phone? Yeah, and when people are texting or tweeting about baseball, the number one emoji associated, according to the poll, is a peach. What poll is this? This is just a poll that I created in my mind, and I've, <laughs> I've done a quick numbers game, and I made sense. So it's a peach and a, an eggplant. Not, not, the, uh, not the baseball emoji. No, no one's using that because it's too hard to find it. It's mixed up in all the sports. Well, those are stunning results, and uh, I frankly am very surprised. Can we get her out of here? Ty, now, I, the, we got to kill time. The disrespect is palpable. We got to kill time. Oh, wait, hold on a second. I think we have time for one more question there. They seem to be uh, trying to drain... Uh, the field, uh, it looks like there's a little whirlpool, so uh, I guess it's working. 
Oh, I agree. While that, while that tub is emptying, <laughs> I'm going to look at a question here. And I have a little good one. Okay, this one's from Brutus at Joshua E. Jensen. His picture's a guy doing a selfie, but pretending he's not really doing it because he's kind of looking serious. <laughs> Is the ball full of cooties, and that's why no one wants to touch it for long? So, because I noticed this in baseball, too. Everyone's always trying to get rid of the ball like it's a hot potato. Now, is that what, A, is that where the game hot potato comes from or vice versa? And B, is the ball full of cooties because maybe everyone doesn't try not to get it? And C, where does the ball go at the end of the round? Well, in the earliest days of baseball, uh, of course, before they, they came up with the, the, the horse hide that uh, has evolved in the baseball that we know today. Um, you know, it, it, the baseball baseball now is, is a leather cover and it's filled with, uh, you know, string, essentially. Um, Whoa. And uh, it used to be an actual potato. Uh, what they would do was they would heat up a potato, just just lava hot, so hot, so hot. Oh, I like the sound. And of that. they would uh, and they would throw it around. This is before the game had a bat, and they would just they would throw the potato at you, and you would try to keep it from touching you uh, because you didn't want to get burned. But you also couldn't let it touch the ground. But you couldn't let it touch the ground because it was blessed by God. The, the baseball, the, the potato would be taken to the local church. Uh, it would be blessed, heated to a almost molten temperature, and then tossed around. And, and then who, who uh, just who, whoever won the game at the end got to eat it. Of course, it was lukewarm by that point. That's exactly right. They would the part of the part of the reason for baseball was for people to eat. Yeah. And so uh, now uh, that's of course uh, the way the game is played in modern times. Harkens back to those days when it was a literal hot potato. Wow, you really got to a really good answer. I one time cut open a baseball. And it was inside a rubber ball that was so bouncy and covered in this little rubber string. So I guess I knew the answer, too. <laughs> it's not full of cooties, full of some sort of other material. What did you use to cut open the baseball? Uh, a hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of playing like I was on a deserted island. Like it was a coconut. Well, uh, good news. The game is back in... Progress. Yeah, they have drained the field. Dry. Both teams have taken the field. And this is the final at bat for the crawlers. And where we left off was there was two strikes to Eddie Greenmain. And here's the final pitch. And Greenmain goes down looking. The Harps have won this game 12 to 0. He spun around. In a circle trying to hit that thing. He did. He never, what's strange is he never swung the bat. He just held tightly, so tightly to the bat. And and just did a spin. It was an impressive spin. It was an impressive spin. Worthy of dancing with the stars. Well, that's another one in the books for the Cumberbatch County Crawlers. This was a very sad final game for me. Um, there was a, oh, right. This is your last show. This is my last broadcast. Your and last I'd, broadcast. I had hoped we'd at least get one hit, but that... I, I feel bad because I, I should have asked you some questions no. about your time and this career. Meanwhile, I performed a poem, told you about my religion, talked about your perfect C-shaped body. Ty, I couldn't think of a better way to go out than to spend this time with you. I mean, if if we had actually at least gotten one hit right. would have been would have made it that would have been a cherry on the cake but uh as it is it has always been my pleasure to spend these hours with you in this booth and thank you tracy reardon for joining thank us thank you i you know I, what i really want right now is a cake with one cherry on it <laughs> it's my favorite type of cake so good <laughs> so thank you to all the fans for your support over the years. And of course, we'll see you for Midnight Bingo at the Cumberbatch County Rec Center. And never forget to take your Chantix. Never forget to take your Chantix. <laughs> for Ty Richardman and Tracy Reardon, this is Shem Creek signing off forever.
these are precious. These are precious. These are precious creatures. My precious creatures. My precious creatures. I now know all about that. Creatures. Oh, that's me. Who said that? That was you? It was me. That was me. Go on. Who was it? Three chairs. That's good. Thank you. Um, uh, hello, three chairs oh, we boy. are. Okay, Yoda. Did you know that I've been to Hobbiton in New you Zealand? Have? Yes. Oh, I'm going to stay at an Airbnb um, next weekend that looks like a hobbit hole. It's in that, LA. I want to see it. Yeah, I'll That show sounds it to you. cool. Wow. All right. We're going to do a scene in two minutes. And then uh, when the timer goes off, we have to redo the scene in one minute. Then when that timer goes off, we redo it in 30 seconds, then 15 seconds, then seven seconds, then three, then one. I follow. Why would we do one? I don't know, but <laughs> here we go. One second. <laughs> All right, Lauren, we need a place. Um, This place is the grocery store. The grocery store. Two minutes on the clock and go. Excuse me. Can you tell me where I could find canned beets? Yeah, you... it's in the canned food aisle. Sorry, which... I thought I was going to help him. I think he was talking to me. Well, oh, I don't mind either one. It's, of look, you it's my help. first day on the job, and I just I'm. I anxious. just think you I should would... watch how I do it because you're going to learn how to interact with customers. Is that what they mean by shadowing? I someone? just yes. want to know where the beets are. Okay, so, um, ma'am, the beets are in. That's a man. Don't misgender him. I'm okay. a ma'am. Uh, it's... Oh, I'm sorry. When you said you were a ma'am before, I thought you said I'm a man. No, I said I'm a ma'am. Oh, that's such a weird way to say I that. Would, that I, I, well, I'm, I I'm an older woman, I, and I'm owning it. I'm I a ma'am. I did gender you correctly. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So I will tell you that the beats, ma'am, This are... is a robbery! Oh, oh no! no! Oh, my God, my first day on the job. This is so exciting! Give she, me all the beats. Okay, okay I'm, I have to shadow her. I still do want beats. Okay, want beats? I have to shadow yes. her and see how she treats the okay, robbery. Okay, so... Um, so what do we do? I've never paid for a beat in my life, and I don't intend to start now. Are we supposed four. to give them just the, uh, give well, them the beats well, and the money, or what do we the do? Gun to my back, so we're we're all going to walk towards March. aisle four. So the what? Are, what how are we supposed to? Do we tell them the cart, combination? Grab a cart. Tell them the combination she to the safe. Stop talking to each other. It's making me nervous. I'm sorry, but I'm training. Timmy, she just figure. want beats. Timmy, eh? Timothy. Now I know your name. Timothy. Oh, she Timothy. just want beats. Oh, forget it. She just want beats. I just want beats. She just want beats. I just want beats. <laughs> And now we pan out, and this is a music video, and we are seeing that it is being shot. And there is a grocery store, and there is a robbery, and this is all part of the play. That is what a life I've had. Music. From a lowly grocery store robber to the star of my own music video. <laughs> I just want beats. I just want beats. I don't cut, want cuts. Cuts. What? I really wish you wouldn't improv. Okay. Why? I want people to tell. I want people to know my story. Improv is hot these days, Dean. I know, but we're just wasting film. You know, it's like... even hotter making fun of improv. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I Look. mean, we hired, we, you, you're not even supposed to have lines. <laughs> that was like ten minutes. <laughs> that is the two minute one is a big ask. <laughs> All right, ready? One minute. You guys ready? Here we yeah. go. Yes, could you tell me where the beats are? Oh, sure. The beats are over an aisle. Timmy, will you just watch me do it? Oh, You're I'm sorry. I'm supposed to shadow me. you. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay, ma'am. The beats are actually It's in... ma'am. Oh, uh, yes. That is what I said, in fact. No, don't misgender him. No, He's a man. I no, said ma'am. Ma'am. It, I said oh, ma'am. I'm sorry. Really. I misheard he you said earlier. Ma'am. No, ma'am. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm older. I'm owning you, it. Uh, uh, if you want to, I will let you know where the beats are if we just take a moment. And Oh, you're pulling a gun on me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is a robbery. Okay, what do we do? Timmy just, well, let Timothy. Um, what, 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 how do we oh, handle the situation? Do we give, the beats are in aisle four. Give her the, the aisle four. Oh, I the the safe or? I never paid for a beat before. And I'm okay. not gonna we start pull now. out and we are on a film set. And suddenly it's a music video and they're doing a cool song about the robbery about of the About how they beats. just want beats. I want those beats. I want those beats. All right, cut. Here I am. Oh. Excuse me. I really wish you wouldn't improv. I didn't even do it yet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dean. Okay, everything was. At least no, no, I just want beats. Everything was an improv. At least let me improv Dean, before you Dean, tell me not to do it. improv is hot right now. <laughs> All right. Let's go down to 30 seconds on the clock and start. Yes, where are the beats? Oh, they're over Please in aisle. Please watch me do the I'm beats. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to shout yeah, at you. Yeah, yeah. The beats are right over day. here in aisle four. If I you just still follow. don't have the beats. Okay, we're just going to get the beats and somebody. Oh, you're oh my God. Gun at me. That's what? right, it's a robbery. What do we do in this situation? Give do me we, those we, beats. Just go to aisle four. She's pushing the gun against my back. Oh, Come God. on, March. Ma'am, Give me those ma'am. beats. It's ma'am. ma'am. It's ma'am. I am saying ma'am. We want those beats. We pull out and there's a music video and it's a whole amazing set. All right, cut. What a life. Oh, cut, 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 cut. I just could tell you were about to talk. I wish you wouldn't improv. right now. Now, improv is hot. <laughs> All right, 15 seconds. 
<laughs> I feel like we're crazy. All right. We are. All right, here we go. And start. I want those beats. Okay. So, <laughs> All right, Timmy, where do I... let me shut okay, you're showing go ahead. me. The beats I are right this way. Oh, oh my God, a gun. gun. It's a robbery. Give me the beats. Okay, okay, okay. Shh. Boom, boom, boom. And we pause the music video. I want video. those beats. Boom, boom, boom. Look at me. All, All right, Cod. 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 I wish you would not improv. <laughs> All right, seven seconds. Ready and go. Beats? I right this way. It's oh a robbery. God, it's a music video. I want those beats. Here I am. Cut, I can't cut, believe cut. my life. <laughs> oh, really? No, improv is hot right now. I wish you wouldn't so improv. I wish we hadn't gotten through all those beats earlier There's because no we saw two seconds. Seven seconds. Beats. What? No. There, oh, that was fifteen. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't reset it. Ah, oh, shit. We okay. had it. Well, it. now three. Now three. Here we go and go. Beats. No, no. robbery. Cut. Here improv. I am. <laughs> All right, one second. Ready? Oh shit! All right, and one second. Go. Cut. Don't no. improv. <laughs> Wonderful. 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 <laughs> we did it. We did it, that folks. Do it. So fun. We did it to it. We did it. You know. Wow. And, yeah. I want those beats. I want those beats. I want those beats. I want those beats. Cut. I want those beats.